to be gets it to go. Oh, free throw by Splash. Oh! Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the Max Stern Athletic Center for today's play-in game between Frisch and DRS. This is the NTSY Summer free game show. NTSY Summer, best summer ever. I'm Charlie Bentheim, joined alongside by Yosef Silver. Now, Yosef, before we get into in, before we get into who's playing in this game, what does this game mean? Well, this is the first time the committee is trying out this idea of a play-in game. I happen to think it's a great idea. It gives the opportunity for both Frisch and DRS, after tough losses to the season, to prove that they deserve a spot in Sarachek. The winner will become the 13th seed in Sarachek and face Chalhevet tomorrow at 2.30 right here in the Max Stern Athletic Center, while the loser will be eliminated from Sarachek contention and be done for the tournament. So let's go into this game a little bit. What did these teams both do in order to get into this position right now? Well, let's start with DRS. DRS had a solid season. They play in the Eastern Conference, which is a really tough conference. Um, and they only lost to North Shore, Hafter, uh, Magan and Flatbush, which are the four Yeshiva League semifinalists. Um, but due to their tough schedule, they only finished 7-7. Seven and seven. They lost badly to North Shore in the first round of the playoffs. They're really looking for redemption here. As in terms of Frisch, Frisch plays in the Western Conference, where they were actually tied second. They lost the tiebreaker, and, and now they're third. Uh, they started out the season 9-1, and one, red hot, playing great defense, but they kind of lost it towards the end of the season, and they lost to Ramaz in the playoffs. Look for them to try to earn their spot here. And who are the players to look out for on both these teams? Well, for DRS, we're looking at Aiden Bookbinder and Joe Aaron. Joe Aaron is a really good combo guard. He usually takes up the ball for them, and he can really score from anywhere. He's a great player. And Aiden Bookbinder, he plays down low. He's just a really smart player for the Wildcats. Look for him to do some damage down low. Oh, and oh I'm sorry. I cut you <laughs> up there for a second. I, I wasn't paying attention anyways. Get All back right, to good. it. And for, and for Frisch, we have uh, the big man Ezra Berkowitz. Ezra at a 6'5 frame is just a really dominant force down low. Uh, look for them to work the ball through him with some inside-outside moves. And let's see if he can make a difference for them. All right. Well, it's the play-in game. Sarachek starts tomorrow officially. But this game, just as important. Coming up after this, we got free. The, the maturity level's there. They're locked in the whole time. So it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. Arna Cohen didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want, how much better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and then I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our Shabbos this week. Focus, lock in. Let's go. Dance! The, the maturity level's there. They're locked in the whole time, so it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. Arna Cohen didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want, how much better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and then I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our Shabbos this week. Focus, lock in. Let's go. Hello everyone and welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center for the play-in game between Frisch and DRS, the winner of this game facing off against Shalhevet in the first round of Sarachek. A very important game. The starting lineups are sponsored by the Yeshiva University Office of Admissions. As you start your college journey, make sure you visit us online to check out all the great events and opportunities we have for YU students. We will start with the DRS Wildcats. Their starting five is as follows, starting at Forward, the 11th grader, number one, Avi Slamnicki. Starting at guard, the senior, number 11, Jeremy Greenberg. Starting at forward, the 6'1 senior, Aiden Buchbinder, number 13. Starting at forward, also a senior, number 30, Simon Sim Simone Biton, pardon me. And then starting at guard, the 11th grader, number 42, Joe Aaron. They are coached by head coach Moshe Cohen. And now for the Frisch Cougars. Their starting five is as follows. Starting at forward, number three, Hoodie Schatzkes. Starting at guard, the 5'8", 11th grade, Max Schachter, he'll be number, he's number four. Number 24, Ronnie Human. Starts at guard, he's a senior. 
Joshua Markowitz, the 6'2 forward, senior, number 30. And rounding out the starting five is Ezra Berkowitz, number 35, comes in at 6'4. He's a senior as well, plays center for the Cougars. Okay, so we got both of the starting fives. We've got both these teams gearing up to play in the first ever play-in game here at Saracen. And like we said in the pregame, it's a really good opportunity for both of these teams, despite ending the season a little bit poorly. Frisch lost uh, four of their last five, while DRS lost three straight to uh, North Shore, both ending their seasons. Um, so it's a good opportunity for each team to prove that they really do belong in this tournament. Both teams obviously a little bit you know, disappointed that they didn't get an outright, an outright uh, bid in the tournament. Um, but speaking to both coaches, they're really excited for the opportunity to prove to everyone that they, in fact, do belong. Now, it seems like they're, both teams are warming up again for some reason, so we're going to send it to a quick commercial break, and hopefully after that we'll be back with basketball. Don't go anywhere. What does it mean to be yourself? It's being bold. Oh, Having heart. I know that I have a responsibility and a platform uh, to shed light on the Jewish community as a whole. This is the professional debut for Ryan Terrell. He's trying to be the first ever Orthodox Jew to play in the NBA. But most of all, it's being proud and wearing it. Clipped helped Ryan's fans show their pride. Let us help you spread the pride at your school with your own hassle-free merch shop. Contact Clip today for your free consultation. Never be afraid to be who you are.
kids. The, the maturity level's there. They're locked in the whole time, so it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. Arona Cohen didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want, how much better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and then I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our Shabbos this week. Focus, lock in. Let's go. so much gratitude to Yasai for everything that they do. A older son, Ellie, he became very involved in Yafad. I've seen him grow and I've seen him become a better person through Yafad and he was hooked from day one. Yafad is like so much a part of our life. I have no doubt that wherever our life will be many years down the road, Yafad will be part of it. Get ready for five days of some of the best basketball of your life at the second annual year of the Ready to Ball League camp. Join us in Teaneck, New Jersey at the end of June or in the five towns at the end of August. We're going to have Ryan Terrell be our head trainer for the second straight year alongside other amazing coaches and featured athletes like McDonald's All-American Dylan Harper. Use the promo code SARACHECK25 to get $25 off your registration and I look forward to seeing you this upcoming summer. Hello everyone and welcome back into the Max Center Athletic Center. We are just waiting on the referees to show up actually, which is why there's been a delay to this game. So we're going to actually send it back to commercial break. And next time we come back, hopefully, please God, there will be basketball. So again, don't go anywhere. The playing game coming up, hopefully next. The maturity level's there, they're locked in the whole time, so it, it's, it's a really good environment to get better. Arona Cohen didn't look at anyone but himself. Well, the best part about this is seeing these kids, how badly they want, how much better, how badly they want to get better. The older kids are realizing, like, if you want to play at a high level, you got to really work. Hashem gives us six days of the week to say, work your butt off, and I'm going to give you a day to rest. So until then, we're going to bust our butt and deserve and earn our Shabbos this week. Focus, lock in, let's go. glass utensils. What's the story with going to a non-kosher sushi restaurant? I use a dairy blender to make a part of cake to serve at a meat meal.
My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Cover to every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my chavrita. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap what happens at a typical day at RTB? You show up and you hear an awesome schmooze for 30 minutes by Rabbi Avi Rosalimsky and Ryan Terrell about a Jewish topic related to basketball. After that, you come into the gym for three hours of skill-focused training. Each hour is 55 minutes of training and then a five-minute break. Within the hour, we focus on one specific area of your game, and over the course of five days, we touch on all areas. To cap off the day, you have one league game, and then you go home after an awesome day at RTB. Hello everyone and welcome back into the Max Center Athletic Center where both of the referees have now showed up and we are just about ready to start this game. When the referees walked in there was a kind of sarcastic round of applause for them. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, bizarre situation, hopefully the last we'll see of this tournament, um, but definitely happy to have the refs here and uh, to get this game going. Yeah, they may have not gotten the memo that there's a play in this year. So they maybe were scheduled to come tomorrow and human now. Markovitz cross court. Too high for Shafter. So a difficult pass. And with that turnover, Coach Jensen takes Markovitz out of the game. And Noah Fishman will check in for Frisch. A lot more Frisch fans here than DRS fans. Yeah, I'm surprised there's no greenhouse here tonight. Uh, you can see the Frisch fans trying to white out. Um, but the DRS looks like they're trying to blue out tonight. The blue out. That's good. Shot was short. Almost another turnover. Nice catch there by Shotskis. Berkowitz gets the ball knocked out of his hands. It'll stay with Frisch. And that's the matchup we're looking at tonight. Berkowitz versus Bitone. And that's great defense by Bitone, not over committing, committing the foul, just sticking with it and knocking down the ball. Human off the inbounds. Shaka thought about it, works it down low, spin move, jumper, no good. That was Fishman, and back comes the RS. 
Aaron got the ball poked away from him. Saved, and now it's Greenberg. A little loose with it. And DRS will reset. Aaron, low by. Tries to use his left hand, no good. Fishman with the rebound for the Cougars. We got two guys on Berkowitz down low. Human thought about it. Extra pass. Shotskis. And no one in particular and back home the Wildcats. So that's the second turnover here by Frisch in the early stages of the first quarter. Blow by layup, no good. Berkowitz with the rebound. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of sloppy play from these teams. A little bit to be expected. I haven't played basketball in a while. Um, you know, it's going to be very often in these games when both teams are playing sloppy. It's going to be. It's going to come down to who figures it out first. Who's able to get them to keep their composure and really limit the turnovers and take smart shots. Berkowitz catches down low. Three DRS Wildcats close in on him and block the ball out of bounds. That's the game plan for DRS. Just be able to crash down on him. Just be able to crash down on Berkowitz once he's able to. Uh, you know, once he gets the ball down low. So the first offensive game plan, clearly obvious, worked the ball into Berkowitz. He's got it again here. He rises, layup no good. Foul will be called on Vito, sending Fishman to the line for two shots. And what you saw in that play is the effect of Ezra Berkowitz. Um, he obviously wasn't involved in the initial rebound, um, but since they're committing so many guys to just keeping him away from the basketball, it let Fishman be able to get to the hoop. And now he's standing at the line for two. First shot is good. Second shot, same result. Fish up 3-2, and it's interesting. The Cougars started off the season 9-1, and, and it was heavily due to their defense. And it's that side of the ball where they really make their money. Offensively, they're not as prolific as that jumper is good. Knocked down by number 13, Aiden Bookbinder, his first points of the game. Another turnover, but Saidi checked in for the Wildcats, number zero, stepped out of bounds. It's Schachter, Fishman, dishes out to Berkowitz, cross court, and Aaron gets the steal. Very sloppy basketball here by the Cougars. Aaron, he'll get fouled by Heumann. And I wonder which of these coaches, you've seen a little bit of sloppy play from both teams, I wonder which coach is going to crack first, call a timeout, try to regroup his guys. Although we've seen a lot of smart defensive plays from Joe Aaron, really a good awareness of where the ball is on the court. We've seen him at with, I think, it's up to two or three steals at this point. Uh, and on that broken play for DRS, he was in the right spot at the right time to be able to get the bucket. Max Schachter checked out of the game. Aton Slasky checks in. That's for Frisch. Three-pointer on the way, that's way short. I didn't love that three. There was still time on the shot clock. Wasn't perfectly set. It's Aiden. Three straight on. Doesn't fall. Rolled around the rim. Most of the Frisch fans here wanted it. Neither team obviously playing so well offensively, but that might be due to the tenacious defensive nature of both of these teams. As Bookbinder will try another mid-range jumper. That one no good. Yeah, Bookbinder couldn't get that one to go, but we saw him hit one from a similar spot uh, on a previous possession. They're going to have to, they can't leave him wide open from there. Obviously, the way you beat that, that match zone is with the high post. But Frisch is going to have to be more aware of where Bookbinder is on the court. That's being good being aware. That's a very nice play by obviously Nicky to knock it out of bounds. Um, but Frisch is really going to have to watch Bookbinder. He's a very smart player, really high IQ, knows where he needs to be. Uh, and that's definitely someone that they're going to have to keep an eye on. Solid defensive play. Knocking it off of Frisch. 
So it'll be DRS basketball, 3.20 to go here in the first quarter. Aaron, mid-range jumper, no good. A good rebounding by both of these teams on the defensive end, not allowing for second chance opportunities. Both these teams do have some height. Human, he'll try a three. That's short. And just as I say it, it's the two fresh big men underneath with the offensive board. Human again. Can't get that with the fall, and Markovitz with the loose ball foul. And that's Markovitz, the second, with 2.49 left. I'm assuming he's going to go take the bench. It's Aaron. Slim Nicky. Mid range jumper too strong. I thought it hit off the top. That was Buteau, and instead, it's grabbed away by Markovitz. Slim Nicky hobbling away from that play. Something to keep an eye on down the stretch. Three pointer. That's going to be a little bit off. Another offensive rebound. This time by Human. Throws it up and in. Nice awareness by Human fighting for the rebound and with a nice putback to give Frisch a 5-4 lead in what's been a really sloppy first quarter. Aaron loses it. Goes right through Saidi. Aaron trying to get by Markovitz. Hook Bonder, he'll go right. Gets blocked from behind with a foul, is called on Human. Had two hands on him, two shots coming for Bookbinder. see on the replay, Frisch was a little disappointed with that foul. Um, and uh, there, while there was all ball by Noah Fishman, there was a little bit of contact down low by number 24, Ronnie Schumann, which is who they called the foul on. First shot is good. We apologize for any technical difficulties with our mics. We're working on fixing that. Second shot is good. Reminder to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up halftime show. That will be at the end of the second quarter. We'll plant those seeds right now as Schachter kicks out. Fishman drove and threw the ball away. Slomnicki with the steal. Yet another turnover for Frisch. Uh, there really hasn't been any timeouts this, this quarter. I wonder if between quarters or if someone's going to call a timeout before then. These coaches really got to get their teams to play much tighter. And Schachter now with the steal for Frisch. So back and forth we go with the turnovers. Schachter, Markovitz. Look at this tenacious defense by DRS, but he gets rid of it. Oh, Hero step inside, layup too strong. There's a nice try there. A lot of contact there as Saidi Saidi set himself up for a uh, for a charge. That uh, jumper is good. Obviously, Nicky over Markovitz. But both these teams strong defensively, looking to get it going on the offensive end. Slasky going to be fouled. He'll get two shots. Make sure he's okay. 37.1 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. 8-5 DRS in the first ever Saracek playing game. And entering the gym now are the what look to be the two-time defending champion, Valley Toro Wolfpack, uh, coming out to, uh, I guess, scout one of these teams, or just in general, to, uh, you know, get acclimated with the gym before the, uh, you know, before their big game tomorrow against Beth Tefila. First shot is good, and one of the New York teams, New Jersey teams, looking to dethrone this L.A. superpower of Yeshiva League basketball. And it's the L.A. teams oftentimes which come in with the most to prove they feel because they're not in the Yeshiva League. And this is their chance to go up against their friends as, as an attempted full-court pass. But Max Schachter looking like Darrell Rivas knocking that ball away. Talking to uh, Coach Lior Schwartzberg of Valley Toro before the tournament, 
He was uh, pretty quick to remind me the uh, dominance of the West Coast. Said the uh, LA teams have won, I believe it's nine out of the last ten Sarah checks. Uh, and definitely, you know, a lot of Yeshiva League teams are, are ranked pretty high this year. And they will definitely be looking to dethrone that, that LA run. 20 seconds left here in the first quarter. Frisch has the opportunity to hold for one. Ball gets knocked up. Slasky throws it away. That'll be a backcourt violation. With 7.5 to go. And Coach Brian Jensen is pretty irate with this squad right now. Being a little too loose with it. Got to credit DRS. And it's an interesting move by Frisch to touch the ball. I would have let it roll out there. There's only 7.5 seconds. Maybe take a little bit more time off the clock. The seven and a half seconds will allow DRS to run some kind of play. Aaron off the inbound. Head of steam inside. Throws it up. No good. Three seconds still left. The ball is thrown down the full court. Jackson trying to get there. Close it up and in. It's not going to count. It was an impressive play. But a microcosm a little bit how this first quarter has gone. 8-7 DRS. We're going to send it. Get ready for five days of some of the best basketball of your life at the second annual year of the Ready to Ball League Camp. Join us in Teaneck, New Jersey at the end of June or in the five towns at the end of August. We're going to have Ryan Terrell be our head trainer for the second straight year alongside other amazing coaches and featured athletes like McDonald's All-American Dylan Harper. Use the promo code SARACHECK25 to get $25 off your registration and I look forward to seeing you this upcoming summer. Hello everyone and welcome back into the Maxstone Athletic Center. You're gonna see the replay here of Max Schachter just after the buzzer had sounded, throws it up and in. But Yosef, what do you see there in that first quarter? Yeah, it was a little bit of a sloppy quarter for both teams. It was to be expected between the pressure of uh, this game and the fact that these teams haven't played in a while. There may be a little bit of rust to uh, shake off. James Dykeman checks into the game. First free throw, no good. Saeedi gets the second one to fall. So two possessions in the second quarter. Points on both of them for the Wildcats. Schachter cutting Dykeman, too strong on the way. That was a gorgeous find on the baseline, baseline drive by Dykeman. Uh, but couldn't get the shot to fall. Saeedi gets the ball poked away from behind by Max Schachter. Ball on the ground. It's a fight. It's going to be a jump ball. Both teams getting on the ground for it. It's going to go with Frisch. And that was a really strong play by, by Tzvi Saidi, not giving up on that ball and forcing the jump ball over there. We were talking to Coach Moshe Cohen before the game, and he mentioned that he would probably call them their, their, the team's X factor. Uh, he feels that when Saidi really you know, gives it his all and plays a clean game, that you know the team just plays much better and responds very well. Berkowitz with the catch gets fouled by Saknovitz right away. It's interesting to start the game. Frisch went right to Berkowitz. They've kind of gone away from that as the first quarter wind down, but out of the commercial break, out of the quarter's end, they're going right next, right back. Part of me to Berkowitz as that ball's poked out of bounds. It'll stay with Frisch. Yeah, I think it was a little, in the beginning when they went to Berkowitz, DRS was really focused on making sure to stop him. So they really collapsed onto Berkowitz. So it kind of took away that option. They tried to work through other things. Um, and now, after the timeout, they're really going back to what's their number one option in Ezra Berkowitz, trying to 
use him to help quick start the offense. Therese haven't been falling for Frisch to start this one. Slimnicki, blow by with the right hand, too strong on the layup. He got to the spot, he just couldn't finish it off. Now, layups haven't been falling for these teams really either. A lot, we've seen a lot of missed layups both ways. A lot of these points are through free throws. There's also got to be a sense of nerves for both of these teams. First game of Saracek with a playing game. A lot on the line here. They want to be playing Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Schachter. Berkowitz, he'll try a triple. He's got it. And that's the thing with Ezra Berkowitz. Not only is he so dominant inside, but he can really hit those shots. And when he forces you to watch him, no matter where he is on the court, it really causes problems for defenses. From Nicky. Nice cut by Aaron. He'll pull up. Can't get the shot to fall. Saidi with the rebound poked away. Now foul's going to be called on Max Schachter. Both teams going to do some subs. For Fish, Markovitz checking into the game along with Chotskis. For DRS, Bitone checking back into the game. And Saidi going to take a break. It's a well-earned break for Saidi. As we saw DRS on that last possession, we were talking before about Ezra Berkowitz and Frisch going right back to their number one option. Well, Joe Aaron is that for DRS. Uh, and I guess maybe a little bit inspired by what Frisch did on one side of the court. They, uh, you know, they're going back to their number one guy, seeing if he can jump, quick start that offense. Aaron almost lost it, got it back. Bookbinder. Slumnicki. Schachter on him, 15 left on the shot clock. Aaron, Vitone sets the screen, he'll try a deep triple. Ball got blocked by Markovitz. And rolls out of bounds, it'll stay with DRS. Four seconds left on the shot clock. A little bit of an interesting possession there by DRS. Uh, kind of looked very hesitant to shoot. Uh, both, both Aaron and Adir Saknowitz had opportunities, uh, but neither one of them chose to take it. Aaron, Dirk style, gets it to fall. Off one leg baseline. And that's why he's their number one. He can make awesome plays like that. Three point game. Foul gonna be called. Four and a half to go here in the first half. Both teams playing well defensively. The offense beginning to percolate here in the second half. Second quarter, pardon me. I'm used to the YU games with, with no quarters at that. Ball is lost and it's on the ground again. Mad scramble, DRS gonna call a timeout. Bookbinder called a timeout, headsy play. So they'll keep possession. We'll go to a quick commercial break, don't go anywhere. NCSY Summer is the premier summer trip provider for Jewish teens across the world. With over 20 plus programs spanning the US, Israel, and Europe, NCSY Summer can find something for you. Visit NCSY, pardon me, visit summer.ncsy.org to learn more. SB Tone, brick the layup. Book book binder there to clean it up. Good energy out of the timeout for DRS. Caught Frisch a little bit napping. Off the inbound, kind of went straight at the basket. Don't think Frisch was expecting that. Schachter, Berkowitz now. 
He thought about a three. He gives it off. That's a deep three from Dykeman. He gets it to fall. And it's interesting. Fisher seems to change up their offense a little bit. And they're really, in the first quarter, we saw Berkowitz kind of staying down low and really trying to dominate the inside. Now we've kind of seen him move out, forcing DRS to come out and defend him, leaving them vulnerable for back backdoor cuts. Aaron. Markowitz draped all over him. Aaron, he'll try the mid-range jumper. Probably got duped by the Fish Faithful who are counting down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 with 8 seconds left on the shot clock. So it took probably a tougher shot than he Answer. needed to. Yeah, I definitely don't love that. It's one thing to root for your other team. It's another for your team. It's another thing to try to trip up the other team. Um, but unfortunately, it's something that DRS is gonna have to deal with, and Aaron's got to be able to, uh, you know, identify what the real time is, and not just listen to the crowd. Berkowitz takes it strong inside, and we have ourselves a tie basketball game. And that's again Berkowitz working from outside to inside, really just. Moving train going down the lane. No one really wants to step in front of him. Vito, he'll try a triple. He leaves it short. Rebound's going to be knocked out by DRS. Markovitz taking a well deserved breather. Fishman checking back in for DRS. Shmuel Fine getting his first minutes of the game, number five. Offensive foul going to be called on Hoodie Schatzkes. Only Frisch's third team foul. Taidi. Fine. Bookbinder, tough. Turn around, mid range. Jay can't get it to go. Yeah, don't love that for DRS. That is Bookbinder's range. He does like to shoot it from there. A little like, uh, but ultimately, you know, there was enough time on the shot clock. I would have liked to see him try to get a little bit of a better shot than that. Dykeman tries again. He gets fouled. Three shots coming. So James Dykeman coming off the bench. Making a good offensive impact here for the Cougars. See there on the closeout, he got hit. A little bit undisciplined by Taidi. He's been flying all over the place, but he's got to watch himself. He's got to let, he's got to be able to let Dykeman land. First shot is good. Come to Como Pizza for some great pizza, pasta, salads, and even awesome breakfast options. We'll be streaming the games in the store, making it a great place to watch the games while you eat. Actually had it for lunch today. Very good food. Good eats. And good people. For sure. So Dykeman makes all three of them. Frisch leads by three. It was all DRS. I wouldn't say all DRS. They were ahead for most of this game thus far, though. Frisch doing a nice job. Coming back as that shot is short. A lot of mid-range jumpers, you don't often see it in today's basketball game. It's usually threes or layups, but DRS is opting to shoot these free throw line extended jump shots. And it's not just mid-range jumpers, it's mid-range jumpers early in the shot clock, which is what's surprising me a little bit. Um, you know, not that these guys can hit the shots, but do you really want to take a contested mid-range jumper with 20 seconds left on the shot clock? Find a beautiful drop down low. Bookbinder gets fouled, he'll get two shots. Look at this feed. As we see Coach Cohen going over to Joe Aaron, probably just telling him to settle down. You know, you don't need to shoot so quickly in the shot clock, kind of just, you know, work the offense, trust the system, let's play it out, and let's actually get the best shot. Bookbinder gets them both to fall. Good free throw shooting here by both teams. 
One away to go here in the first half. That was Frisch's fourth foul, so DRS will be in the bonus if Frisch were to foul again. Top take inside foul called. Fish when he gets two shots. Reminder to stay tuned for the Camp Step It Up halftime show. After the, the duration of this second quarter. If you want to receive Sarachek news and updates, and get close game alerts, join our WhatsApp group. The link is in the description of this YouTube video. And all Sarachek games which are played at Yeshiva University will be broadcast on MaxLive.com and the MaxLive YouTube channel. So subscribe to MaxLive on YouTube and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single Sarachek broadcast. Super excited to get this tournament underway. We get an extra game this year. Two great teams fighting hard. Slomniki inside. Floater is no good. Two second differential between shot and game clock. Max Schachter bringing it up for Frisch, up three. Timeout called by Frisch. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break, don't go anywhere. Get ready for five days of some of the best basketball of your life at the second annual year of the Ready to Ball League camp. Join us in Teaneck, New Jersey at the end of June or in the five towns at the end of August. We're going to have Ryan Terrell be our head trainer for the second straight year alongside other amazing coaches and featured athletes like McDonald's All-American Dylan Harper. Use the promo code SARACHECK25 to get $25 off your registration and I look forward to seeing you this upcoming summer. Hello, welcome back into the Max Center Athletic Center. 27.6 seconds remaining here in the first half. Frisch leading DRS by score 2017. Both teams playing in this play-in game, looking for a spot in the Sarachek tournament. Max Schachter with Aaron on him. Okay to let this clock dwindle. Here comes the five second count. Six seconds now on the shot clock. They're gonna have to hurry. Ball gets deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Frisch. Three seconds left on the shot clock. That'll be interesting to see what Frisch dials up here. Obviously you gotta get the ball out quick. Berkowitz is gonna have to put it up. He gets inside, flips it up and in. With one second left on the clock and that'll be it for the first half. So Berkowitz looked like he didn't realize how much time was left, but he did, throws it up, gets the layup to fall, Frisch up five, and now we're gonna send it down to the third member of our crew, Joel Weinstein, standing by with head coach Brian Jensen. Joel? It's been a back and forth game, but you built yourself a pretty nice lead here to end the half. What do you plan to do to grow this lead in the second half? Yeah, I mean, anytime you play in a game with high stakes, it's good. everybody's gonna have jitters, everybody's gonna be a little sloppy and making some mistakes early on. I feel like we started to find our rhythm in the second quarter. It always starts with our D. When we play good D and make it a one-shot possession, that always leads to good things. Offensively, we just gotta stretch their zone and they're, they're, they're looking to double Burko. We gotta take advantage of that. Great, thank you, Coach. Sure. Thank you, Joel, thank you, Coach. We're gonna now send it to a commercial break and we're gonna be back with second half action. Don't go anywhere. basketball when I was 12 years old.
take you back to the beginning of Step It Up. A kid with hoop dreams in seventh grade, played middle school ball, played high school ball. I wanted to be a Division I player. My friends were cynical about it. My teacher at school, my head of school, the dream became a reality. And this little kid from Boca Raton, Florida, I ended up finding myself in Madison Square Garden. That only fueled more and more, and the dream became bigger. I transferred to Brandeis University in Boston where I played two more years before moving to Israel, playing a year of pro ball. And at 25 years old, two years later, I started stepping up. At the time, a basketball private training company. I remember the first session I ran, I was driving home and I just had goosebumps. I felt something, I said, this is it. And from that private training session, we grew more private trainings in a day camp where kids got better in a five-day program. So I said to myself, kids are getting better in an hour and getting better in a week. Let's start a sleepaway camp. Let's take them for six to eight weeks. It can make a real shift in their mind, a shift in their soul and their perspective. And that's what we did. I sit here with you 12 years later in 2023. We started with one kid in 2009. This summer, we're fortunate enough to host over 430 campers from 20 states and 10 countries. When I first started to step it up, the intention was to run a high-end skill development camp. Little did I know, it would evolve into a life skills camp disguised as a basketball camp, whose core principles are the same principles that I not only grew up on, but still live by to this day. Open heart, open mind. If you come in with the right attitude and you open your heart and mind, we can make tremendous progress. Attention to detail, on the court and off. Live passionately, because what else is there? The way you do anything is the way you do everything. Whatever you choose to do in life, do it all the way. Action above all. Don't talk about it, be about it. Experiences over materialism. It lasts much longer and it's more real. Good breeds good. Be good to yourself and be good to one another. Game speed, game life. We train with a focus and intensity on the court, which turns practice into a game and the game into a practice. We work hard, we play hard, we step it up. These principles are beyond basketball. We use basketball as a vehicle for growth and success. And the results, well, they speak for themselves. Countless number of middle school and high school MVPs. Over 60 college players, division one, two, and three. Professional players, national team players, a EuroLeague Rookie of the Year, an NBA draft pick, and over 5,000 families, all of whom have stepped it up. We have a love for the game, timeless principles that guide us, a state-of-the-art campus, engaged coaches, we have the results. The choice is simple. It's time to step it up.
What does it mean to be yourself? It's being bold. Through the alley for Terrell! Oh my goodness! It's having heart. I know that I have a responsibility and a platform uh, to shed light on the Jewish community as a whole. This is the professional debut for Ryan Terrell. He's trying to be the first ever Orthodox Jew to play in the NBA. But most of all, it's being proud and wearing it. Clipped helped Ryan's fans show their pride. Let us help you spread the pride at your school with your own hassle-free merch shop. Contact Clip today for your free consultation. Never be afraid to be who you are. Hello, everyone. Welcome back in to the Maxon Athletic Center. We are almost ready for second half action. This is our halftime show, and our halftime show is brought to you by Camp Step It Up, which is located in upstate New York with busing provided to and from camp. Camp Step It Up is the most proven Shomer Shabbos basketball camp in the world, featuring 33 current Saracek players and over 400 past Saracek players, as well as YU and Stern College Stars over the past 12 years. There are programs for boys and girls grades 4 through 12, including 1 to 7 week options in both the U.S. and Israel. There are three minyanim per day, learning groups, and a camp rabbi. Past campers include many Yeshiva League MVPs and over 60 college players and even an NBA draft pick. Additionally, some of the players in the game tonight have been camp ste step it up campers, including for Frisch, Harry Baum, Ezra Berkowitz, James Dykeman, Max Schachter. So for more information, email office at campstepitup.com or call 888-600-0908 or visit timetostepitup.com. We are now going to send it down to the third member of our crew, crew Joel Weinstein standing by with Coach Moshe Cohen. Joel. All right, Coach, you're down five, but good thing basketball is a game of runs. What are your plans and adjustments that need to be made to... Yeah, so we got to move the ball around better offensively. We're a little slow, a little stale, get our feet under us. We looked a little tight. We're going to try to move the ball better and just hit those open shots. Um, ball movement. Guys cutting and ball movement offensively just have to be better. They're a good team. They're a good team. They play a strong game, so we'll see if we can pull that off. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Coach. 16 minutes left in this one. Eight minutes split into 16 minutes. Pardon me. Eight minutes on the clock for the third quarter. Again, this is high school, not college, so there are four quarters, eight minutes each. Now, yo, safe that first half. What did you see from both Frisch and DRS? Uh, well, both teams started out. Both teams started out the first half a little sloppy, which was to be expected between the pressure of the game and the fact that these teams haven't played in a while, maybe a little rust, you know, adjusting to the new court also. Um, but really, as the game started to go along, we saw we saw Frisch really separate themselves from DRS. Uh, in the second quarter, they played a much more disciplined game. Um, you know, they played much smarter basketball, taking, took a little bit more care of the basketball, were a little bit more effective on offense. Um, and for DRS, it's been really tough for them. They've, they haven't really been able to find the bucket all game. Um, and that's definitely something that they're going to have to figure out going into this second half. Well, for Frisch, it was defense that allowed them to get off to that 9-1 and one start. Obviously, they kind of struggled as the season went on. But doing a solid job this game. DRS only on pace for 34 points. And for DRS, Bookbinder and Aaron, they're two premier players. Started off the game really well. They've cooled off a little bit, but look for them to get back going. And that's who it's going to have to be for DRS. We've seen... Some of their other players contribute well to Saidi, uh, is most notable among them. Um, but if DRS is going to come back, it's really going to come down to Bookbinder and Aaron really showing up and proving that DRS does, in fact, belong in Sarajek. Things just getting set up. Looks like Frisch being aggressive on this inbounds pass to no avail. It's Avi Slamnicki, Saidi, and Aaron. And we are underway here in the second half of this playing game winner to take on Shalhevet in the Sarachek tournament. Three is short. 
Bookbinder to try to corral that pass, driving inside. Instead, it's Frisch with their first possession of the second half. And that's not a possession you're looking for if you're at DRS. We saw them make a bunch of mistakes in the second quarter, and they went right back to that. They took a shot early in the shot, too early in the shot clock. That was mildly contested. They lost the ball. They couldn't get it back. Uh, they're really going to have to fix them, as that's a nice play by Joe Aaron driving the lane. Uh, but they're really going to have to play much better half-court offense if, uh, if they're going to come back in this one. And Joe Aaron there in transition would like to see him do that a little bit more. Run the ball up the court. He's a very skilled finisher. And that's something that we saw in the first half as well, that when DRS went high tempo, Frisch really struggled to be able to combat that. I wonder if they go to that more, to your point, in this half. And it looks like DRS has come out of the gates very aggressive on the defensive end. Berkowitz now grabs it down low, turns and gets blocked by Bookbinder. Here comes DRS. Aaron. Pitone. Bookbinder had an opening for a second. Instead, drives it in, floats it up and in. One point game. There we go. We saw the floater from Joe Aaron. We saw the floater from Aiden Bookbinder. The DRS team, they really like to attack mid range, especially that tonight the, the three pointers haven't really been falling. Um, but especially when you go from two, they're going to have to go in, and that was a nice play by Bookbinder. Beautiful backdoor cut layup, no good. Cody Shots just couldn't get the shot to fall. And DRS now with a chance to regain the lead. They had it for most of the first half. Tahiti rolls around the rim and out. Ball knocked out of bounds, Frisch basketball. Fishman. Human. Berkowitz. Pumps. Two steps, kicks back out. Human open for three. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Bitone. Aaron now in transition. Takes his two steps, flips it up. No good, but two shots coming. Just like what we were talking about before, DRS really looking to push in transition. Uh, Frisch has maybe been a little bit slow to get back down the court. Um, and DRS really has been able to take advantage of that so far this half, as Aaron wasn't able to get the layup to go, but did get fouled. And let's see if he can convert these two free throws. Tie game. We would like to take Chopsticks for being a proud Max Live sponsor for the best Chinese food in Teaneck. You've got to go to Chopsticks. Head to ChopsticksUSA.com to order online. The link is in the description of this video. So DRS back up one. Back and forth we go. Joe Weinstein mentioned while interviewing Coach Cohen that basketball is a game of runs and DRS has come out of the gates in the second half, very hot, gone on a run of their own. Seven point run, six point run, pardon me. As Schachter looks to end that, he can't. Rebound there by Fishman. And he successfully puts an end to the run. That's a great play by Noah Fishman, not quitting on the ball, really just fighting with DRS box outs, grabbing that board and putting it back up. Bookbinder spinning his way into the lane, rises back iron. Schachter with the rebound, going up there with the trees. Fishman, he gets fouled, two shots. That's DRS in their match zone, really just closing in, closing in on, uh, on Fishman over there as he goes up, but they're gonna have to be more careful not to foul him. As we've seen a lot of free throws from both of these teams uh, this game, and they've really been hitting them at a decent clip. First shot is good, I mentioned it in the first half, but free throw shooting from both these teams, very impressive. And in a game like this especially, 
uh, you know, very often the, the problem with the free throws is that it's a lot of pressure. It really gets to your head. Uh, but both these teams seem to be, to be unfazed by uh, the, the pressure of propelling your school into the Saturday Tournament. Defense! 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 Saidi, Aaron inside, he gets fouled and one. So Joe Aaron. It's a good play by Aaron going strong to the rim. And he's going to get rewarded with this foul shot. Let's see if he can tie the game for DRS. And he does. He's a good player. Moves well with and without the basketball. Non-stop motor. A lot of these DRS players doing a lot without the ball. It's Berkowitz. Fishman, he's had a nice beginning to the second half. Beautiful fine down low to Berkowitz. He gets blocked by Betone. Aaron had it, lost it, has it back. Tie game, four minutes to go here in the third quarter. And on that last defensive possession from DRS, we saw them with another, with another trap. They really like pushing baseline and then setting up those traps down low. Bookbinder, filthy cross and reverse lay. Nice play by Aiden Bookbinder. Really making his man go one way, going right around him, and driving strong to the hoop. All right, got some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Work down low to Berkowitz. He's harassed by three DRS defenders. Back out to Fishman. Berkowitz again. Cutting human, pumps, now pulls. Layup goes. And he's pumped up. Yeah, it's good awareness from the smaller human. If they're doubling, if they're gonna double, if they're gonna double Ezra Berkowitz, that means there's gonna be open space on the floor. He was able to find that and really take advantage. Human poked away from Aaron. Now Shaq to block off the backboard by Saidi. Dykeman tries a three, he leaves it short. And Bookbinder grabs the rebound. Wow, exhale. We're talking about the intensity that Speed Saidi brings to the floor. And we saw it right there, really just never quitting on that play. Uh, and with the athletic block. Reminiscent of Saracek a couple of years ago, where DRS were the uh, unfortunate beneficiaries. Not beneficiaries, they are. <laughs> they, got, they got hurt by a block off the backboard. And I'm losing the semifinal game is that shot. The final game, pardon me. <laughs> Obviously don't remember it so well. Shot was no good. Human gets called for the foul. And a technical foul as well on Human. So maybe letting the emotions get to him too much. Yeah, and that's something as a player. Obviously there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of intensity in this game, but you really gotta be able to control yourself and really just, you know, keep, your, keep yourself calm, keep yourself, uh, you know, controlled. Um, and something else is that's gonna be Human's fifth foul, I believe. So he's gonna be done for the day. He's really made a nice impact for Frisch here in the second half. Uh, but with 2.14 to go in the third quarter, he's, he's gonna be out for the rest of the game. Aaron calmly knocks down the free throw. Slasky checking back into the game as is Markowitz. Shmuel Fine coming back in for DRS. Bitone taking a break. Slasky got a knock early on in the game, bumped his head on the floor. Glad to see that he's back. And he's going to have to play a bigger role for Frisch now that Ronnie Human is, Ronnie Human is fouled out of this game. Aaron traversing the lane, flips it up and in. Once again, that's really been DRS's key to success in the second half. Really just driving to the basket, forcing Frisch to close out. Now they're drawing a foul or hitting a layup. Schachter pumps. Slasky straight on triple. Can't get it to fall. Rebound is grabbed by Markovitz. Fishman, that's a mid-ranger, a little too strong. 
and Fine grabs the rebound. A little bit of almost uh, panic from Frisch on that possession. You know, sometimes when a guy gets attacked, it could be frustrating, it could be, you know, get a little anxious. But they really got to settle down in the half court with only six points in the entire third quarter. Saidi, blowing by Markovic and using his right hand. And he struggled to hit the ball, from at, hit, hit his shots, excuse me, from outside, uh, both from three and just, you know, the mid-range twos. Uh, but it's nice to see him get a layup. Let's see if he can string that into a couple buckets. Ball knocked away, here comes Aaron. And he'll finish that layup and one. Foul from behind by Markovic. And it's not a position you want to be fouling over there. He's basically got that bucket down. No reason to add in the extra foul. And the few DRS fans that are here making some real noise as the timeout's going to be called and we're going to send it to a commercial break. DRS up 36 to 28 and a chance to add to that after this quick commercial break. What happens at a typical day at RTB? You show up and you hear an awesome schmooze for 30 minutes by Rabbi Avi Rosalimsky and Ryan Terrell about the Jewish topic related to basketball. After that, you come into the gym for three hours of skill-focused training. Each hour is 55 minutes of training and then a five-minute break. Within the hour, we focus on one specific area of your game, and over the course of five days, we touch on all areas. To cap off the day, you have one league game, and then you go home after an awesome day at RTB. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap Gap year. Welcome back in. DRS up 36 to 28. 50 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And for more behind the scenes pictures and content you won't find anywhere else, be sure to follow at Max Live on Instagram and Twitter. And with Sarachek having arrived, Max Live is your home for the tournament. Watch games, news, stats, and more at MaxLive.com. MaxLive.com. That's M A C S L I V E.com. MaxLive.com, your home for. The Red Sarachek tournament. The free throw good. Lead up to nine for the Wildcats. Frisch gonna have to get it going here offensively. Markovitz. Slumnicki called for a blocking foul. And going back on that uh, timeout, I really like that timeout from Coach Brian Jensen. Uh, Frisch was really you know, they looked really lost. They looked really anxious. Uh, they're just not playing smart basketball, kind of panicking. Uh, you know, take the time out, try to settle his team. You know, maybe recover some of these points before you really turn it on in the fourth. Slasky can't get the three to fall. And fine, he grabbed the rebound. May have gotten away with an elbow. He's got it now. Tries the drop pass inside. Brookbinder got it and gets the layup to go. And it looks like there's an injury for Frisch. It's James Dykeman. He got caught with an elbow on the last possession. Yeah, it looked like the ref didn't notice it. You know, they were jostling for the rebound. And I'll be accidental, of course. Uh, but fine, wound up catching Dykeman either in the eye or in that area with the elbow. Uh, so they get the injury timeout once Frisch got possession of the ball. Schachter. Fishman, after Schachter, that three's on its way, and the three's just not falling, that will be the end of the third quarter for Frisch. DRS up 39 to 28, they're eight minutes away from punching their ticket into the Red Saracek tournament. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break and be back with fourth quarter action.
Hello everyone, almost set for fourth quarter action. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors. If you would like to become a Max Live sponsor, email us at yumaxlive at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram or Twitter. We are underway, eight minutes left to go in regulation of this one. Saidi, he walked with it. Chris gonna have to get it going on the offensive end. Defensively, this whole now, looking at the scoreboard, down 11 points. Frisch is really going to have to be careful. Um, we saw them getting hurt a lot, you know, in transition and really with these drives and cuts from DRS. Um, and then also a little bit on the offensive glass. So Frisch is really going to have to clean that up. Um, they've got seven minutes, which is plenty of time to come back from an 11-point deficit. Um, but they're really going to have to shape up in this fourth quarter. The zone doing a lot for DRS here. Aaron's got five steals for DRS. He's got 20 points and five steals. He's having a spectacular game as Noah Fishman will go to the line for Frisch. You know what they say, the big players show up in the big moments. He said at the, end of the, at the beginning of the second half that if DRS were going to mount a comeback, that they were going to need good performances from Joe Aaron and Aiden Bookbinder, and they both of them really delivered for DRS in the third quarter. Free throw, no good. Bitone checking back into the game. Fine, taking a seat. Second free throw is good. 10 point game, 7.03 to go. The Frisch faithful have gone quiet. After that spectacular third quarter as Aaron with a beautiful cut. College layup. It was Bookbinder on the fine, just a beautiful play call. Yeah, and you love to see it, both of them pointing at each other, going back down the court, really the recognition uh, and appreciation for the other. Uh, as that was a nice find by Bookbinder as, it, as Aaron just cut him into a wide open lane. Slasky catch and shoot three. That's off back iron. Aaron's got it. Two steps using his left, no good. Brookbinder there to clean it up though. Just Batman and Robin. Timeout, Frisch. 14 point game, DRS could smell it. Quick commercial break, don't go anywhere. Thousands worldwide choose Israel for their gap year. Massah has opportunities for interning, studying, volunteering, and exploring throughout the country. Doing an internship on gap year, I learned all these skills that no kid who hasn't gone to uni is supposed to know yet. My experience at Massah learning about Judaism and Israel is going to help me take those values into my future, into college, and then bring them into the rest of my life. Now, more than ever, this is your time to explore Israel, explore who you are on your Massah gap year. 43-29, the Wildcats lead. This is the play-in game. A lot of basketball coming your way over the next few days. Exciting times here at the Maxson Athletic Center. For now, Frisch, a very big-name school in the Yeshiva League, on the verge of not even making the tournament as 
Dykeman drains that triple. It's been a really tough shooting night for Frisch. Um, but James Dykeman's really been the bright spot for them in that area. Uh, that's probably, I think, his third three of the game. Uh, let's see if they can uh, turn it up. Aaron, ball stolen by Markovitz. Let's see if Frisch can make a little bit of a run. Crowd uh, back into it for Frisch. Coach Jensen calling out of play. Dykeman, back out to Schachter. I don't know what the play was. It doesn't seem like they're executing it. Oh, Seven seconds. Dykeman wide open. Dykeman, he'll try a deep three. Air ball, an empty possession for Frisch, but it'll stay with him as Markovitz knocked the ball out of Bookbinder's hand. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was Markovitz or Reich, but either way, really smart play. You know, fo staying focused on the play, not giving up, even though Bookbinder corralled the rebound, knocking it out, and they're gonna earn another possession. But keep in mind, there's only three seconds on the shot clock. Let's see if Frisch understands that. As now it's gonna reset. Berkowitz, a three, rolls out. Big rebound there by Betone. And I'm sure the play was to Berkowitz, but on there they missed another wide open James Dykeman, saying if he's your hot hand, you gotta know where he is on the court. And just easy does it, Bookbinder finding Betone for the layup. Lead back up to 13. Dykeman, that three's off back iron. Saidi grabs the rebound for DRS, so it looked like for a second as Bookbinder, what a pass, corrals it, throws it up, no good. Markovitz with the rebound, and he'll get fouled. DRS going a little fast if they're up. 13 points, I don't know if you need those full court quarterback style passes. It was a good one by Aaron, but Frisch ending up with the ball. Yeah, it was a nice piece of chemistry from uh, Joe Aaron and uh, Aiden Bookbinder. They've been going back and forth all game. But, you know, maybe it's, you know, they struggled in the half court offense in the beginning of the game. I think they got to try to reset themselves and maybe play a little bit slower. Markovitz down low. Berkowitz. Cross court. Three's on its way and good. So Dykeman clearly the hot hand for Frisch who are going to call a timeout. They cut the lead to 10. Things getting interesting. Here in the second half, we're going to send it to a commercial break and be right back. You're not going to want to miss the end of this one. What happens on a typical day at RTB? You show up and you hear an awesome schmooze for 30 minutes by Rabbi Avi Rosalimsky and Ryan Terrell about the Jewish topic related to basketball. After that, you come into the gym for three hours of skill-focused training. Each hour is 55 minutes of training and then a five-minute break. Within the hour, we focus on one specific area of your game, and over the course of five days, we touch on all areas. To cap off the day, you have one league game, and then you go home after an awesome day at RTB. Three fifty-nine remaining here in this one. DRS up ten. Frisch making a bit of a run. It's been James Dykeman hitting a couple of threes here in the fourth quarter, sparking this Frisch team. Saidi foul going to be a blocking foul. That's. A big call, Markovic's gonna get called for it. And he really thought he got the charge, he thought he was set, uh, but ultimately the referee is gonna call the block on him, that's gonna be his third. Um, and like we were saying, yeah, as we see on the replay over here, maybe just got set a little bit too late on that one, um, you know, if he wanted to draw it. Um, but with DRS up either 11 or 12, um, look, look for Frisch to feed Di James Dykeman. Although they're going to have to get the rebound first. A missed free throw, another opportunity for DRS. They'll slow it down. 
Aaron blow by, kick out. Three pointer on its way. No good, who wants the rebound? It goes to Frisch and Reich. And we saw in that play, Frisch is in a tight spot because they're down double digits with only three and a half to go. Uh, but when you press up a guy like Aaron, he's just gonna blow by you. So they're really gonna have to figure out a way not just to get stops, and to, uh, not just to hit shots, but to be able to get stops and get quick stops um, in order to be able to claw back into this game. Shot was no good from Fishman. Aaron gets the pass deflected, ball on the ground, Bookbinder's got it. Now Beton wide open underneath and he'll finish the bunny. That second, that second pass was the pass he wanted, but the first pass, uh, you know, we saw it a little bit before with that full court pass. You know, Aaron, may, may, he may want to slow it down here. You're, you know, it's under three, under three minutes left in the game, up 13 points. There's no reason to force passes into tight windows with 30 seconds left on the shot clock. I'd like to try to see him maybe milk the clock a little bit more. Uh, you know, really force Frisch to, you know, get either play up and maybe give them give the opportunity for an open lane or an open man on the wing or just something as opposed to giving Frisch the ball right back. Schachter. Dykeman, he'll heave. Look true. No good. They get the rebound, though. Rice is rejected by Aaron. Bookbinder instructed to slow it down. Aaron with the head of steam. Gives it to Beton and DRS now. Gets things a little bit under control as Aaron is fouled by Reich. Yeah, they must have heard us in the booth because right after they grabbed that rebound, it was all slow it down, slow it down, let's control the tempo. Uh, and I really like that for DRS. You know, after the foul, they're going to get 35 seconds back on the shot clock um, with the shot clock reset. Uh, the opportunity to take it down to about a minute 45. Um, before Frisch can even touch the ball again. Aaron off the inbounds. Layup no good. He gets his own rebound and he'll put that one back up no good again. Padding the stats with the boards. Couldn't get any of the layups to fall though. Once again, just bad clock management from DRS. You know, hopefully for them it won't hurt them down the stretch. But if you're Joe Aaron and you're you know, the best player on your team, you gotta be aware of the clock, even if you have that shot. Schachter drains a deep three. And Frisch calls another timeout. 2-0-1 remaining. What is Frisch going to have to do if they want to mount this comeback? Um, well, it's going to start off with playing aggressive defense. You know, with the they're down four possessions. Uh, you know, barring a foul, uh, you know, a four-point play, um, which means that they're going to have to really force some turnovers. They're not just going to be able to let, you know, just play good defense and four stops. They're going to have to force turnovers from DRS. Uh, I wouldn't start fouling here, um, but they're really going to have to play up. You know, play smart defense. Uh, and definitely, if DRS takes a shot and the ball doesn't go in, if Frisch doesn't grab the rebound, they're going to be in big, big trouble. And now is when free throws become such a big deal. And thus far this game, I mean, Joe Aaron's been unbelievable from the free throw line. And we're going to have to see if Bookbinder, along with some other players on DRS, are able to hit those free throws down the stretch. And this just in from Akiva Poppers. Frisch only has one full timeout left, uh, with Coach Jensen being a little trigger happy on his timeouts here down the stretch in the second half. Let's see if that can potentially come back to bite them. When you're going down, you know, fouling, free throws, etc. You really want those timeouts to be able to advance the ball, you know, reset the offense, begin, regain composure on some of these crazy bat, you know, bang bang plays. Uh, without really the ability to do that, only one full timeout for these last two minutes, one second. Let's see if, uh, you know, let's see if that's gonna matter down the stretch. I think he's been using them in order to stop the clock and set up his defense on these made shots. See now that Frisch out in the press looking to force one of those turnovers. Yeah, and this is what they're going to have to do. That's going to be a foul on Shaq there. Slum Nicky right up. Shaq there goes over. Says, my bad. Didn't mean to knock it, knock it down like that. Always love to see the sportsmanship. That's only Frisch's third. So they're going to have two more, to, one more to give. Excuse me. Ball into Aaron. He'll pull it out. Schachter on him. And I'm sure during the timeout, Coach Cohen instilled in his guys, do not force up shots right now. That's not what we're looking for. Smoke the clock and live to see another tournament. Bookbinder almost lost it. Saidi, though, got it back for DRS. Slamnicki. 
tough take inside, layup no good. I'm surprised how much DRS put the ball on the floor in that possession. Typically in these, you just kind of like to hold it. You know, it's the safest play, way to play. Uh, you know, dribbled around. Bookbinder almost got in trouble with that. As Dykeman connects on the three. Timeout for Shagan. Seven point game, 118 to go. So things getting a little bit interesting. Now it's within seven. It's still a three point, three possession uh, deficit. But now Frisch is fully out of timeout. Um, with 118 to go, I don't really agree with that. I don't really agree with that uh, strategy from Coach Jensen, just because now every single time you get a you get a miss, uh, you know you're gonna have to take it straight down the court. You're gonna have to be able to gain your composure and hit quick shots. Right, it's three possessions, but they're gonna have to foul at this point. Um, I think you try to force the turnover first. Um, but in order to get back into this game, they're gonna have to foul and hope DRS misses some, which DRS has not been missing any or missing many uh, this game. Um, but let's see, you know, obviously he called a timeout to get the defense to gain composure and really just, you know, try to force that turnover, emphasize that they need that turnover. Um, let's see, let's see how, how they fare down the stretch. A reminder that coming up after the game is the Yachad post game show. You're not going to want to miss that. James Dykeman, that was his fourth three of the game. He's also got three free throws to go along with it when he got fouled on a three earlier. So he's got 15 points leading the scoring for Frisch. It's interesting. They're not putting anyone in front of Bookbind. They're kind of just letting the play play out. Ball rolling on the floor. Jarris has got it. And here comes the trap. He'll get fouled by Slasky. Vitone going to be going, not going to be going to the line yet, actually. It's only the fourth team foul, but dicey there for a second for Jarris. Yeah, once again, trying to avoid you know, putting the ball in harm's way by putting the ball in harm's way. Uh, they're gonna have to be much more controlled down the stretch over here. Aaron, inside foul, and one. That's huge. And that's the last thing you wanted to do if you were fresh. Yeah, I was initially gonna uh, critique him being so aggressive and driving to the lane. Uh, you know, I, I prefer him just kinda hang out, but saw the open lane, nice strong play and he'll, be, he'll have the opportunity to cut this lead to 10 in what could be the dagger in this one. Well, he's got 24, he's trying to make it 25. He's been the best player on the court today. Can't get the free throw to go. Lead stays at nine. Schachter. They gotta hurry here, they're taking a lot of time off the clock. Slasky, catch and shoot triple, short, rebound. Pulled down by Vitone, but thrown away. That's a tough shot underneath. No good. DRS has got it. Aaron up the court. There's no one there, and Saidi's going to finish that layup. And probably put a ribbon on this one. Schachter. Frisch, their season winding down. Markovitz no good on the three. Vitone with the rebound. Aaron with the ball in his hands, shot clock turned off. Frisch not, doesn't seem like they're gonna foul. Timeout called by DRS, that'll do it. 14.9 to go, DRS up 52 to 41. DRS gonna punch their ticket into the Sarachek tournament, gonna take on Chalhevit, so it only gets harder from here for them. But they played a nice, complete basketball game, an impressive win from the Wildcats. Yeah, we really saw them struggle a little bit in the first quarter, maybe getting over some of the jitters or just the new court. Uh, and the second quarter wasn't much better for them as we saw a little bit of a run from Frisch. Uh, but this second half has really been all DRS. Uh, they've operated their offense uh, exactly how you'd want it. Uh, you know, Coach Cohen calling the timeout, able to get some of the other guys on the court. Obviously, he loves to see it from him. Um, and that's going to do it here. Um, but overall, a great performance by DRS, and uh, they're going to have to give Shell Hevet their all tomorrow. Final score, DRS 52, Frisch 41. We are going to go to a quick commercial break and be back with the Yachad Post Game Show. Do not go anywhere. We've come a long way, haven't we? 
chalk it up to maturity over time. Because this time, we will not be silent. This time, we will stand strong and proud. This time, we will hold our ground. This time, they'll never stop me from being me. Clipped, show who you are. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Yachad postgame show brought to you by Yachad. DRS has just beaten Frisch by a score of 52 to 41, and now let's send it down to our sideline reporter, Joel Weinstein, standing by with our players of the game. Joel? Boys, boys. All right, you guys ended off the season on a little bit of a cold streak, but tonight, this second half, you're nothing but hot. You had 24 points and five steals. How do, you, how do you guys feel? You made this hair check. Give us some, some emotions. I mean, like, first half we got up to a rough start. We weren't comfortable. Second half we started to get off. We started getting our zone. We started pushing the ball. Once we got into our defense, we were moving correctly. Me and Aiden got off to our start. We did what we had to. We threw up in the beginning, but we moved past it. Oh, yeah. Our whole team did their jobs. We just we did what we had to do to get rid of them. Exactly. Hey, congratulations, boys. You got Thank something you. to say? Thank you. This backdoor cuts. Join the double team. Dishing. Really a team effort. Everyone had to do their part. Shout out to Fresh. You guys played unbelievable, stifling defense the entire time. It's a crazy matchup. Looking forward to show Heaven tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations, you. boys. Congratulations. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Aiden Bookbinder and Joe Aaron. They both played a great game. Yo, say final thoughts on this one. Yeah, just a quick shout out to Aiden in that interview. You love to see you love to see a guy being a real mensch off the court. Sure. Um, but overall, um, you know, it was a great game from DRS. Uh, they were really able to adjust after what was not a great first half. They really acknowledged they couldn't hit their shots, and they really tried to work inside high tempo, uh, and Frisch could never really rebound off of the, metaphorically, and a little bit physically, um, off of the, you know, DRS adjustments. Just want to say thank you to everyone who made this stream possible. Our executive director, Eitan Traurig, our executive producer, Zevi Panzer, our associate director, David Raviv, Associate producer, it has you down there, Yosef Silver. <laughs> you were up here with me in the booth. You did a great job. Director David Raviv. Camera operators, Lev Ursler, Donnie Horowitz. And anyone else who did the camera? Oh, Nomi Klinghoffer, thank you so much for Charlie Bentheim. Well, I am Charlie Bentheim. For Yosef Silver, I'm Charlie Bentheim saying so thank you so much for joining us. Here at this play-in play game, we got Sarachek Tournament coming tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. And you're not going to want to miss it. Thank you again and have a good night.